The Department of Homeland Security plans to ban laptops in the cabins of all flights from Europe to the United States, European security officials told the Daily Beast. The announcement is expected Thursday. Initially a ban on laptops and tablets was applied only to US banned flights from 10 airports in North Africa and the Middle East. The ban was based on US fears that terrorists have found a way to convert laptops into bombs capable of bringing down an airplane. It is unclear if the European ban will also apply to tablets. DHS said in a statement to the Daily Beast. No final decisions have been made on expanding the restriction on large electronic devices in aircraft cabins, however, it is under consideration. DHS continues to evaluate the threat environment and will make changes when necessary to keep air travelers safe. However, this move is increasing fears in the aviation industry that as well as guarding against bombs this ban could actually endanger flights. Laptops and tablets denied access to the cabin and added to checked baggage means that devices with a history of lithium-ion battery fires could set off a deadly conflagration in a cargo hold, where no one can put out the fires. The FAA recorded 33 incidents in 2016 of personal electronic devices carried into cabins by passengers causing fire emergencies during flights according to an FAA document reviewed by the Daily Beast. Of these, three were in laptops and two in tablets. Two of the most serious were on Delta flights and both involved laptops. On January 15, 2016 on a flight from Minneapolis to Atlanta fire broke out in a bag in an overhead bin shortly before landing. The smoke in the cabin became so overwhelming that when the flight reached the gate, passengers opened emergency exits over the wings and staff on the ramp helped them escape directly from the wings. Flight attendants used halon fire suppressant extinguishers and water extinguishers to put out the fire, which had originated in two laptops. On December 3, 2016 fire broke out in an overhead bin on a flight from Honolulu to Atlanta. Cabin crew needed three halon extinguishers and two water extinguishers to put out a fire originating in a laptop. For the rest of the flight the laptop was placed in a cooler with ice and monitored. The FAA stressed that the 33 incidents are only ones that they are aware of. This should not be considered as a complete listing of all such incidents. Nor do they include all investigative and enforcement actions taken, the documented stated. Tests carried in 2015 by the FAA's fire safety branch have shown that halon gas is ineffective against fires originating in the kind of lithium-ion batteries used in laptops and tablets. Even more to the point, these tests have revealed that the quantity of halon gas used in the automatic fire suppression systems of airplane cargo holds had no effect on a fire that begins as what is called a thermal runaway in a lithium-ion battery. Panels in the cargo hold designed to contain a fire were actually blown out in the tests, creating an explosion that would destroy an airplane. Commenting on these tests, the Federation of Airline Pilots Associations, IFALPA, representing airline pilots worldwide, said, In fact, the fire proceeded as if the halon were not present. Some Middle East airlines complained to the International Civil Aviation Organization that they had been unduly penalized by the original 10-country ban. In response, the ICAO said that it accepted that improvised explosive devices in electronic devices have been the greatest security risk to commercial aircraft for some years. At the same time, they said, they have asked experts to examine the safety risk of a sudden influx of electronic devices in cargo holds. And Patrick Key, a European safety regulator, told Reuters that his agency wants airlines to avoid placing all the electronic devices in checked baggage being in the same container in the cargo hold. At London's Heathrow Airport, where 17% of all flights to the US originate, is adding an extra layer of security screening from those flights at the gates. As the Daily Beast reported in March, the original ban placed on the 10 airports in North Africa and the Middle East followed intelligence gathered during a raid on Al-Qaeda in Yemen in January.
bomb makers had managed to insert into batteries an explosive device powerful enough to bring down an airplane. First indications of this came in 2016 when a hole was blown in the fuselage of an Airbus A320 as it was on its ascent from Mogadishu, Somalia. The airplane was able to make an emergency landing. The insurgent group Al Shabab claimed that it had equipped a passenger with a laptop rigged as a bomb. A quarter century ago, Keith Schiller was a New York City transit cop patrolling the number no. 3 subway line between Harlem and Toughest Brooklyn from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Just to get to his post, Schiller first had to take a cross town bus from his command. He would then ride the full length of the line, take a meal break, and then ride back the other way. His every tour in purgatory affirmed his lack of a hook, as influential connections were known among his fellow cave cops. Schiller now has the biggest hook in the free world. And, as director of Oval Office Operations and the president's main bro, he traveled the six blocks from the White House to FBI headquarters late Tuesday afternoon. Schiller then hand-delivered a manila envelope containing a letter from Trump terminating James Comey as the director of the FBI. The message was essentially what a former fellow cave cop who worked with Schiller remembers as the standard line to an uncooperative passenger back in their days on the number three line. Listen, pal, the best thing for you to do is to get off this train. One difference was that the passenger would not have been in the midst of an investigation involving the very guy who was ordering him off the train. So began this week's chain of events, which are not in fact likely to lead to another Watergate but were from the very start so improbable as to warrant a laugh, if only there were anything even remotely funny about it. We're not in the middle of a constitutional crisis, a senior law enforcement official said on Wednesday. We're in the middle of a very bad joke. And the more you learn, the more absurd it becomes. Ask around how Schiller got to where he is and you hear the story of a day in 1998 when he chanced to see Trump's second wife. Marla Maples. By then, Schiller had rolled over from the transit police to the city police and started working narcotics uptown. He happened to be at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office on a drug case when he saw Maples there, as a complainant against her publicist Chuck Jones, whose fetish for shoes had prompted him to steal as many as 200 pairs from her. She was accompanied by a bodyguard. As has been reported elsewhere, Schiller decided that there was no reason why he himself could not also be a bodyguard. An assistant district attorney in the Maples case agreed to call Trump's director of security, who in turn agreed to give Schiller a dry. Trump and Schiller hit it off. The one-time cave cop has a steadiness shared by many of his kind from the era when radios worked only sporadically underground. Every one of them had experienced a moment of facing somebody considerably bigger and meaner on a moving train with help not coming soon. Every one of them had thereupon learned in the most urgent terms what is at their core. And that would surely appeal to a man who seems to have no core at all. The Department of Homeland Security is considering a ban on laptops in the passenger cabins on all flights to the United States from Europe. The move would extend the current ban on such devices on US-bound flights from 10 airports in North Africa and the Middle East. Authorities would reportedly institute the electronics ban because of fears that a bomb or explosive device could be concealed in a laptop. The ban was first reported by the Daily Beast based on interviews with European security officials. If the ban is imposed, computers would be checked as luggage. Storing laptops in the cargo hold raises another risk, lithium-ion battery fires that could create an explosion and bring down an airplane. The Transportation Security Administration said in a statement, We have not made any decisions on expanding the electronic span, however, we are continuously assessing security directives based on intelligence and will make changes when necessary to keep travelers safe. A TSA spokesman said Thursday, Nothing is going to be announced this week. I'm not going to comment on a timeline. In March, the US banned laptops on flights to the United States from 10 airports in North Africa and the Middle East based on concerns that terrorists could convert laptops into bombs. 
The new ban would affect all U.S. airlines, including American Airlines, which has a hub and a transatlantic gateway at Philadelphia International Airport. In response to the original ban, Persian Gulf carriers including Qatar Airways, which operates a daily flight between Philadelphia and Doha, now provide their passengers with complimentary laptops on flights and allow travelers to use personal electronic devices at the gate until they board the aircraft. The Daily Beast reported in March that the original ban came after intelligence was gathered during a raid on Al-Qaeda in Yemen in January. Bomb makers had figured out how to insert an explosive device into batteries that was powerful enough to destroy an airplane. If there is a legitimate terror threat, the flying public needs to take it seriously and adjust to the new protocols as best they can, the U.S. Travel Association said in a statement. Threats are ever-evolving, and so must we all be.